Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Healthy Newsletter. First, a disclaimer. In this newsletter series, we will share the latest research studies, news and events that we found interesting and think have potential to contribute to achieving our extended health span goal. It is not medical advice. We will cover two research papers, then go through two new NMN registered human trials, look at a tweet from Dr. Sinclair and provide a review of our resveratrol dose. We will also talk about what is the likelihood you'll become a centenarian. And finally, a free virtual event, making healthy aging a reality, which we are going to join. First, let me get into the recent science research papers, which we found interesting. The first paper we are looking at today is this one, published in Aging Cell, which looked at 11 of the major epigenetic clocks and how they compare to each other. The interest in this area is because developing biomarkers that can quantify biological age holds enormous promise for both basic and translational medical research. There have been a number of biological clocks developed. Here are the 11 that are compared within the study. Perhaps the most famous of these is the Horvath clock from 2013. This paper compares the various clocks along a number of dimensions, such as how well they correlate to chronological age age-related diseases, and all-cause mortality. The authors also created a meta-clock based on the features from a number of the original clocks. If the clocks are all looking at biological age, why do they differ? This is probably because different populations and outcomes were used to train them. For example, Horvath 1 clock was specifically trained to predict chronological age and is one of the best at doing this. However, others were trained to predict different outcomes. As mentioned, the authors took features from a number of the clocks to develop their own clock, which they then applied to the Framingham Heart Study cohort. As you can see from this chart, they found that the meta clock had better prediction of all-cause mortality than the best of the two individual clocks, Levine's and Jang's. Measuring biological age accurately and precisely is a key requirement to move forward in human studies of aging, and understanding the clocks may help us to understand the mechanism which is driving them. The second paper is about how exposure to EMF electromagnetic fields can be used to manage blood glucose in order to treat type 2 diabetes. In the study, they set out to investigate the biological effects of static magnetic and electrostatic fields. They found that the combined application of both fields together helps lower blood glucose and improve insulin sensitivity. The study showed a 40% decrease in fasting blood glucose compared to the control group. The EM fields seem to work by affecting the glutathione redox environment, creating a more reducing and so antioxidant state in the liver, which in turn increased insulin sensitivity. A mouse study, and at an early stage, but interesting in that a non-invasive way of controlling blood sugar could have therapeutic effects. Next, we want to go through two NMN clinical trials scheduled to be held this year. For NMN, so far there is only one small-scale human trial completed, which tested for its safety. It's good to see more trials will be held to test the efficacy of NMN. Here is the first trial. Effects of NMN supplementation on organ system biology, organized by Washington University. The goal of this trial is to determine whether the beneficial effects of NMN on metabolic and cardiovascular function observed in rodents applies to people. There will be 56 participants aged between 45 to 75 years old. This is a placebo-controlled trial with the experimental group taking two capsules of 150 mg, total 300 mg of NMN per day. The primary outcome being measured is insulin sensitivity. The second trial is entitled Study on Health Promotion by Exercise Nutrition Intervention, a randomized controlled trial by Guangzhou Sport University. This is a large-scale multi-center interventional study with over 2,000 participants aged between 40 and 70. There will be five categories for the study people with hypertension, diabetes, obesity, undernutrition, and healthy people. There will be control and experimental groups under each category with control groups only doing exercise and experimental groups doing exercise with nutritional intervention. There is no specific detail on whether apart from NMN, 
they will include other supplements for the intervention. The experimental group of healthy people will take exercise training combined with different doses of NMN, low, medium or high. The exact dose of NMN is not mentioned, but for NMN users like us, it's great to hear this kind of study is coming. Moving on to Twitter, on October the 17th, Dr. Sinclair tweeted that 150 research grants to extend healthy lifespan were announced as part of the Healthy Longevity Global Competition. The competition had over a thousand applications and more than 7.7 .7 million in prizes were awarded. It's encouraging to see more funds being contributed to innovation in extending human lifespan. So in Twitter, we have this paper mentioned in a tweet from Dr. Charles Brenner. The aim of the study was to see how resveratrol and terastilbene operate at a cellular level. The authors concluded that resveratrol induced low-level replicative stress in the cells, which is not a good thing. Looking at this, there are a few things that I think we should mention. First, this is not a human trial, but was an in vitro study using one cell type. Secondly, they used a dose of 60 micromoles in this experiment. We have found no way to convert this to the equivalent dose of a person in vivo. But what does this mean for whether we should be taking resveratrol or not? According to PubMed from 2002, there are more than 200 human clinical research papers on resveratrol. We went through these focusing on those papers which covered high dosage and long-term use of resveratrol. What we found is more generally there are a number of human trials which show beneficial effects of resveratrol using doses from 150 mg all the way up to 2 grams daily, where it has been shown to be safe and well tolerated. The period of these studies are from one month to one year. We did find one study where the daily dose was 2.5 grams to 5 grams per day, which did cause mild to moderate gastrointestinal symptoms. So for the moment, I am continuing to take 1 gram of resveratrol per day, though I am thinking of not taking it on my heavy workout days, as finally our gym has reopened. Please review the evidence and make up your own mind. As always, each person has different tolerance for supplements, so please do listen to your body. If you wanted to see what your likelihood of becoming a centenarian is, how could you go about that? This article talks about some of the key things to look for. It does say that genetics only determines 15-25% to 25 of the outcome. But there are some other factors, for example being born when your mother was under 25. A couple of lifestyle factors, maintaining a healthy weight and either living on a farm or having more than four children. And finally, genes do play a role. So having a centenarian sibling increases your chances a lot, or being a direct descendant of Jean Carmen, the oldest recorded human. In the events section, where we share the events that we found interesting and generally are free and non-commercial, we have one event this week. We have just registered for a free event, Making Healthy Aging a Reality, by Dr. Marcia Ori, who is a professor at Texas A&M University and a co-founding director of the Texas A&M Center for Population of Health and Aging. The event will discuss reframing healthy aging as the new normal. The event will be on October 28, 2020. It's free, but you need to register through Eventbrite. The link is in the description. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. As we find more interesting research and longevity news, we will continue to release further newsletters, so please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.